This plant is so large, you might mistake it for a tree. But don't be fooled by its impressive stature. This delicious delight is just the largest of the herbaceous flowering plants. There's a good chance you even have this perfect addition to any kitchen on your countertop right now. This is the banana. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floral Logic. Today we're talking about the world's most popular fruit and my favorite toast topper, the beautiful banana. It's so good. And while you can only find blue bananas in certain parts of the world, our sponsor for this video can be found anywhere and nowhere. Atlas VPN is a tool that encrypts your data and hides your virtual location. How does it work? When you connect to a VPN server, your device is given a new IP and DNS address. All of the traffic is encrypted and routed towards the VPN server. When the traffic gets there, the VPN server decrypts the information and allows the traffic to access the desired destination. That means that it has access to media and websites in different locations. Have you ever clicked on a YouTube video and been faced with the gray screen that says, this video isn't available in your country? I wanted to share a video with one of my friends down in the US recently, but the video was geo-blocked, so that it was only available in Canada. Now I can recommend using Atlas VPN so that we can have borderless content. You can also use it to access Netflix content from other countries, Spotify subscription prices, hotels, and airline tickets. And best of all, it's available on all your devices, so you can access your favorite content anywhere you are. Click the link in the description to get early access to the special Black Friday deal with 86% off and three months for free. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Atlas VPN. Banana is the common name for the herbaceous plants in the Musaceae family. The bananas and plantains that we know and love today are part of the Musa genus. While their sizes vary, cultivated varieties can reach up to 23 feet tall, which is why they're often mistakenly referred to as banana trees. This variety that I have here is called a super dwarf and only reaches about four feet tall. This one has never given me any fruit though because they require such high humidity to flower. And contrary to popular belief, I do not live in a greenhouse. The banana is one of the oldest cultivated plants believed to have been first domesticated in Southeast Asia. Bananas today are grown mainly in tropical and subtropical regions of Africa, Asia, Melanesia, the Americas, and the Pacific. A bunch of bananas is called a hand, and the individual fruits are called fingers. That kind of makes mashing, chopping, and blending them feel a little gruesome. Am I right? <laughs> Did you know bananas are actually berries? In a botanical sense, most of the fruits that we call berries, including strawberries, raspberries, aren't really berries at all. These come from a single flower with more than one ovary, the female part of the plant that turns into the fruit. And they're technically aggregate fruits. Real deal berries come from one flower with one single ovary that has multiple seeds. That includes the star of today's show, the banana. These appealing fruits are one of the most important crops produced in the world today and have been a staple of our diets since the beginning of recorded history. The big player, Cavendish, is the one you're probably used to eating from the grocery store. But there are other varieties, like the blue java, which tastes like ice cream thanks to its creamy texture and vanilla flavor. Sweet and soft red bananas have reddish purple skin and pinkish fruit with notes of raspberry. And of course, there's plantains, sometimes called cooking bananas, which are starchier and less sweet, making them a staple in kitchens across West and Central Africa, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. It's estimated that 100 billion bananas are eaten every year. If you ate one banana per second, it would take you almost 3,170 years to eat 100 billion bananas. That's a lot. With hundreds and hundreds of fully domesticated varieties in existence, you'd think we'd have a pretty good handle on these yummy yellow fellows. The truth is, scientists are still peeling back the mysterious veil that surrounds the banana and its domestication. Today's banana varieties are parthenocarpic, meaning that they're developed without fertilization. Other examples of parthenocarpic fruits are grapes, oranges, pineapples, and grapefruit. After the banana plant flowers and fruits, it's cut down because each stalk can only produce one bunch. 
side shoots, known as suckers, appear at the base of the main stalk, which can be removed and replanted. It's estimated that up to 99% of the bananas we eat today are Cavendish. Because of the way they're propagated, all Cavendish bananas and all bananas that we eat are clones of each other, making them genetically identical. They've been artificially selected for fruit size and deliciousness. This inbreeding has made them unable to reproduce sexually or without the help of humans. If we were to disappear from the earth, this type of banana would die out soon after. <gasps> If a disease infects and kills one banana, it has the power to wipe out the entire cultivar. In fact, the last big variety, known as Gros Michel, or Big Mike, was swept in the 1950s by a fungus known as Panama disease, causing the world's banana producers to switch to the more disease-resistant Cavendish variety. But Cavendish is also in danger. Some banana scientists believe it's only a matter of time before a disease comes to claim the Cavendish too. While naturally resistant to the strain of fungus that decimated Big Mike, Cavendish isn't immune to everything. Right now, there's a new fungus in town called TR4 that is already damaging Asian crops and spreading quickly. But have no fear, science is here. Scientists are already cooking up new, more disease-resistant varieties to make sure we don't have a bleak, bananaless future. In the meantime, if you live far from banana-producing places, to ensure your banana gets to you in perfect condition, it will likely be harvested green and ripened at its final destination with ethylene gas. Ethylene is a natural byproduct of ripening fruits. Once exposed to the gas, the bananas are still green, but their ripening process has now been triggered. When they start to turn vaguely yellow, they're ready to ship to your local grocer. All this gas talk, and I didn't let a single fart joke rip. Bananas are used for much more than just making delicious bread. The whole plant can be used for a variety of purposes, like mulch, animal fodder, fuel, weaving, rope making, building materials, and even medicinal purposes. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye! I didn't actually read the lines, what? <laughs> but Cavendish is also in danger with some banana scientists. Bananas, I, hello, I'm Mark Troy. I'm a banana scientist. Good to meet your acquaintance. <laughs> but Cavendish is also in danger. Some banana scientists believe, I can't say banana scientists with a straight face. <laughs> like I wanna see that on a business card.